Hello gamers, I'm Travis and this is a complete guide to rerolling in Tower of Fantasy. I will assume you are already familiar with Tower of Fantasy and that you are here just to learn how to start your adventure with a weapon or weapons that you desire. Before I get into it, I would like to mention a few important things. First off, this guide is aimed at people that want to start their gaming experience with a certain weapon or weapons and cannot afford to spend a massive amount of money to do so. That being said, if you enjoy the game and can afford it, I encourage people to support the game. Keep in mind that this is a process that might require quite a few rerolls, depending on your luck and the weapons that you desire, and based on how much you can afford or want to spend, it might not be worth wasting your time. The next thing I want to mention is that if you are watching this video at a later date, and the pre-registration rewards are not available anymore, you can still follow the guide, with the only thing that changes being that you will have less attempts per reroll. In this video, I will be using the PC version of the client, but this can be replicated on any platform. Alright, without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, so what exactly is rerolling? It's the process of restarting on a fresh account in the attempt to obtain the desired characters, or in this case weapons, in a game that has gacha elements and provides the player with a certain amount of easy to obtain pools at the beginning of the game. So, the first thing you need to do is create a new account. Once you open the client, press register and input an email address. This can be your original email address, followed by plus and a number. This number will have to change for each reroll, so you can start with plus one for the first reroll, followed by plus two for the second, and so on. Alternatively, you can input a completely new email address, but this will involve creating a new address for each reroll, which can be a pain as well as time consuming. Shortly after, you will be emailed a verification code which you will have to input and then create a password. After this, you can launch the game. The server you have created your original character on should be already selected, but in case it is not, make sure to select it. The first cutscene can be skipped up to the point where you select your character's gender and input a name. The name you put in here can be anything, as later you will use an identity change voucher to transfer the name from your original character or change it to a name that you desire. Do not use a name you like, as you will be locking it on this character and it will require extra effort and time to transfer it over. After we pick up the sword, we will have a short cutscene that can be skipped after a few seconds, followed by a fight with two infected dogs and a wall climb. The green loot boxes in the tutorial can be ignored as we will find plenty of them in the open world. Here, we will have a pretty cool interactive cutscene, which will lose its novelty after a few rerolls. Including this one, there are only three unskippable cutscenes, so it's not too bad. The last bit of the tutorial can be skipped entirely and it will save you some time. From this point on we will follow the main quest, from time to time we will do little detours to pick up easy to collect supply pods that will provide us with extra dark crystals which we will use to summon on the limited banner. If you have no interest in the limited banner then you can skip the detours entirely as you will later have plenty of time to collect them. The first detour is right after the unskippable cutscene. Since we have to wait for Shirley to get to the ship, we can get a golden supply pod that is on top of the ship. After that, we come back to the quest marker. This is where we customize our character. We can speed up the customization by importing our previous character or if we forgot to do that, we can create a template now and use it for all future rerolls. From here, we just follow the main quest up to the point where we walk across the bridge. At the bridge, we can rush ahead and pick the supply pod on the left and make it back to the quest by the time Shirley makes it there. Again, we follow the main quest until the point where we get our jetpack. After the jetpack tutorial, there will be three supply pods that we will have to collect before we go to the tower. 
Using the jetpack tutorial as a point of reference, one of them is on the right, the next one is on top of the house in front of the jetpack tutorial and the last one is on the hill straight over. After we collected the first supply pod, we can head over to the tower. The main quest at the tower will teach us how to deploy our jetpack in midair, which is perfect because on our way down we will find the gold nucleus suspended in midair, and once we touch the ground there will also be a supply pod on the left. From here on we head to the main quest and we will unlock our summoning function. At this point, the people that do not care about the limited summon and skip the supply pod editors can start collecting all the free stuff the game offers you and using any gift codes that are available at the time. Now that you have the summoning function unlocked and plenty of gold nucleuses, you can start summoning. Best of luck! Keep in mind that you are guaranteed to obtain at least one SSR unit from your first 30 summons on the account. So, rerolling a few times should guarantee that you obtain a specific non-limited weapon you desire. It is also possible to get two or even three weapons, but it is unreasonable to expect it to happen too often. So, if you didn't get what you want, you have to go back and create another account and continue the process of rerolling until you are satisfied. What about those that won the limited summon? For those of you that desire to summon on the limited banner, we have a little bit more work to do. So let's continue. We are going to go to the camp on the right to pick up a supply pod and after that we will use the transmit function to teleport to the tower. From the tower we will jump towards the southwest mountain and collect the supply pod in the hut. We can also collect a black nucleus on top of the tree and throw the frost elemental in the chow chow for a golden nucleus. From here we collect the supply pod on the way to the neighboring mountain and the supply pod inside the house on the mountain. From the mountain, we glide down towards the camp in the southwest and collect the supply pod there. From the camp, we head north towards the observatory-looking building, using the jetpack to get on top where we will collect a golden supply box and a golden nucleus. After this, you can press Y to collect the 200 dark crystals from the exploration bonus. From here, I chose to do a detour to collect a transmit point and do a mushroom puzzle just because I enjoy them. The last place we need to get to is an island, so we will use the jetpack and the dodge ability, right click by default, to make sure we don't run out of stamina and drown before reaching our destination. On the island we will find the last golden supply box that we need. If you choose to do this during the pre-launch period, you should have 1200 dark crystals which will be enough for 8 limited pools. With a bit of luck, you will be able to get the limited weapon. Even if you don't get lucky with the limited banner, you should do the normal pulls as well as you might end up getting 2 or 3 units which is extremely rare and you might end up choosing to play with that account even if you do not have the limited banner. If you are dissatisfied with what you pulled, you will have to start from the account creation again. I wish you the best of luck Wanderers and I hope you get to start the game with whatever weapons you most enjoy. If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like and subscribe as it helps the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.